Welcome to Twitter Bootstrap 101 Part 2. Today we're going to dig into the great grid that the folks at Twitter Bootstrap have provided us, and we're also going to play with the media grid. You can see what these look like in the documentation. I'm going to look at these files that we've downloaded, and I've got the main documentation file still out here in the main folder. We're going to tuck it away in just a little bit, but let's look at it first. pulling up this documentation. Again, we're currently working with version 1.4.0. I'm going to go down to layout. So actually, I meant to go to grid. Under grid, you can see that they've set it up with 16 columns and they've used a handy set of classes so that you can use a div class row to contain your div class span 6 or span 10 in this case, which we want those to total 16 to fit across a row. And so you can combine these in different ways. They've even provided a way to do offsets, and you can nest columns inside of columns. So this is really a nice, easy to use version of a 960 grid system. Now for those of you who want a responsive grid, that is in the works with Twitter Bootstrap 2.0. And once that's out, we'll of course do an introduction to it. But for now we're going to work within this grid system. Um, it allows us to get layout going quickly and it will prepare us for what's coming next with the responsive grid system that will come with Bootstrap 2.0. So let's dig into that. Let's look at first the CSS that drives this grid system. and Twitter Bootstrap CSS file. So we're going to go to our files and remember we tucked these away under Assets, CSS, and here's the common, commented unminified version of the CSS and that's the one we want to work in. And um, there is tons of good stuff in here. We have over a thousand lines worth of CSS going on. To cut to the uh, grid section of this, let's do a search on row. So I'm going to do a find and use, look for that class row. You'll remember that's what they use to set up the container for our rows with their columns. So if we cut there, and in version 1.4.0, this is line 252, we see that first of all, row, this class row is set up to include clearfix as part of it. These styles that you see are things that are used as part of a clearfix, and you'll often see styles that have simply a class clearfix and have things like this then applied to them. They've set up class row so that it automatically clearfixes every time we use it, and then they've set up some basic styles so every child div or element of class row that has the term span in it. This is a um, attribute selector that's looking for a class that includes the letters span as part of it. Because you'll see that what happens is we can use span 1, span 2, span 3, and these set different widths. And you can see the widths provided here. All of these are going to start out um, with these styles that are provided to all of them using this selector. So they're going to display in line, they're going to float left, and they're going to have a margin left of 20 pixels. This allows there to be a gutter of 20 pixels between each of these span elements so that it sets up a nice grid system with a 20 pixel gutter in between them. Now the row, let's look back up here at the row, starts out with a left margin of negative 20 pixels which allows for our first column inside of that row to have the room it needs to go flush up against the left edge. So that if we were to open up and look at this example of the hero layout here, let me open that, what you're going to see is that this first one, let's fire up, I'm opening, I'm in Firefox here and I'm going to fire up Firebug. And if we scroll down, you can see that this row actually comes out to the left 20 pixels. I'm looking at the div class row, and then here is where this 
div of, uh, in this case, this is going to be span, there it is, span one third. And it's got this margin left that's taken care of by the negative 20 pixel left hand margin on the row. It's really a slick way to set this up. It's great. Let's uh, dive in and use it here. Now I'm a firm believer in learning by messing around, so let's just uh, open up this file, hero.html, and mess around with it for a minute. So here it is. I'm going to open it in my editor, and we'll see how they've set up the markup. First of all, this is HTML5. Yay! We've got the HTML5 shim so that IE6 through 8 can recognize the HTML5 elements and treat them as block level elements. We've got links to our styles. And so when we've fixed this so that it goes to our correct folder as we've got it set up here, you'll notice that they've set a special style on this page so that we've got padding top of 60 pixels. What this does is leave room for this great little toolbar across the top to remain fixed. And we've got 60 pixels of space for that to live at the top. Um, we're going to keep that particular element in what we do here. And so eventually we're going to move this to our own custom style sheet. Let's come back and do that in just a little bit. And then we've got links to our fav icons. There's one thing we can do here to go ahead and clean things up a little bit so that we can use this file as our template file. What you'll notice is if you look at this file, it's showing no fav icon right now. And it's because our links are disconnected. And so we need to go to track down where those are and should be. Hero, we need to go into the assets folder and down into the ICO folder to find that fav icon. Now eventually we'll probably want to move that little thing out to the main folder as you normally would have it, but for now let's just go ahead and connect these links. So I'm going to change this images folder. I'm going to change this to assets and then ICO. And I'm going to go ahead and fix it for my Apple Touch icons. Now again, if you especially follow folks such as at the HTML5 boilerplate, they're going to say put all of these out in the main folder because that's where they normally should be found. And we'll do that eventually, but for now let's work with the system that's been provided to us. Obviously people get by OK, and we can too for at least a little bit here. Now refresh that and you see your fav icon show up. So we've got nice what we can treat as template files here so that you could build your own files at these dimensions and have what you need for your fav icon and then for your Apple Touch icons of various sizes that are used by different kinds of devices. So that's a nice feature of uh, Twitter Bootstrap as well. It comes with already those kinds of things that we'd normally want to have. We just need to replace these with our own. Okay, so now we're getting into the body section of this document. This div of class top bar is what contains your navigation. And we're going to come back and look at the navigation and uh, play with it in the next tutorial after this one. So let's put that on hold for now. Let's drive on down into layout here. The container is built to contain everything within the main section of our page within the normal, the standard 940 pixels of width. Now again, this is built on a standard 960 grid system, but 940 ends up being what you have when you reduce and take care of um, your 20 pixels of margin around the edges of things. So um, you'll find container over in the style sheet. I'm going to shift over to that and search on class container just so we can know what this is. Here it is. It's a width of 940. Margin left auto, margin right auto, which of course causes it to live in the center, um, horizontal center of your browser. Zoom 1 is part of the clear fix. So just like row, container is built to automatically clear fix. And that's what these other styles are about. So that's what container is. Back to hero now. And we see we've got this div of class hero unit. This is the great, large, introductory message at the top of our page. So this hero unit with its h1, its paragraph, and its button um, is what we see right here. So that hero unit comes with a little bit of 
you can see just a little bit of shading in it and rounded corners. Those styles are built in, gives us the ability to just get started off quickly with a nice big welcome message for our users. And then this grid begins down below. So let's look now at that. An example row of columns. We've got our div class row with a span one third, which is built to take up exactly one third of our available width and uh, a second one of those with its content, its heading, and its paragraph and button, and then a third, span one third. So what I'd like to do is just take what they've already given us, and I'm going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to simply click and drag to select all of that, and I'm going to build another example row of columns. I'm going to leave theirs at the top. I'm copying with the command C, or control C if you're on a PC, and there we've got our second row. I'm going to comment this. I prefer always to comment end of second row. So I know what I'm talking about here. I'm going to lead this in with the second row of columns. All right. So obviously now one third takes up exactly one third of our available width. If we wanted to have four columns, um, we'd simply divide 16 by 4, which gives us span 4. And then I can do that to the next two. Make all of those be span 4. I'll copy this last one to give myself a fourth one. Let's see how it works to fit four of these across. Save that and refresh and just like that I've got a nice set of four columns across. Now what if we wanted to do something like span one-third and then two-thirds so to have one-third over here on the left and a wider section over here on the right that's actually quite easy. We can simply go and I'm gonna do that to this first row. I'm gonna leave the first this is back up at the first row. I'm going to leave the first one as one-third, and I'm going to change the second one to two-thirds. If you look at the style sheet, you find that that's an option that's available to you. And then, of course, I need to get rid of my third one in this case, so they have the room they need. There we go. So one-third and two-thirds. It's easy of enough to switch those around if we want. We can call this one-third and have the first one be two-thirds. Okay, so then we can do, of course, a number of combinations. And let's do these other combinations in the context of a new page that we'll create. And we'll lay it out as if perhaps we were building a portfolio page. So let's come back and do that in the next short video.